Hey everyone and welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. As you can see, we returned back to using two microphones if you're watching the video version. Uh, we heard you. The audio levels were a little uneven, which, which happens because you and I speak at different volumes. Um, I've always been kind of a loud mouth is basically <laughs> the gist of it. Yeah. Um, and you only get loud when you're angry. Yeah, there's that. Usually. Sometimes excited. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, hopefully it's a little bit better this week. We've been playing around with it. Uh, we do not have a separate person like off camera away, like adjusting the audio as we go to make it sound perfect. So it kind of is just one of those things that we just have to make minor adjustments every podcast. So stick with us as we try to perfect the audio. We are just two people trying to make this podcast run. Um, so once you kick off what our first topic is, this our week. first topic would be fire emblem heroes reactions. Yes. Fire Emblem Heroes. We are late to the party. It's a wrap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, no, we, we actually warned you guys last week because uh, we recorded the day before Fire, um, Fire Emblem Heroes came out. Or the day it came out, but it wasn't out yes. yet yeah. Yeah. Um, in the United States. So this is, well, I, I guess, what is Fire Emblem Heroes? Huh. Y- you know, I have only played a little bit of it, so it I'm trying to still quite figure that out and i haven't really played much for fire emblem period so yeah, this is like probably your first fire emblem yes fi- yes hands-on fire emblem yes. experience yes it is um so he's coming out as a new person which is it's how it's going to be for a little while um outside of breath of the wild we have equal experience there basically uh and then for for this game i, I guess the quickest way to say it is that it's a fire emblem game made for mobile smart devices um, and I've heard people call say that it's called a gotcha game. Um, I have no idea what that means to, to, to be frank. It's obviously a style of, of game on phones or something, uh, because a popular thing people are doing with this game is uninstalling and reinstalling it to get that initial like 15 orbs or whatever you start with, because, uh, this game draws in like, heroes from all the other games. Right. And there's different ranks and different star levels. So like, you know, you can get Marth, who's from, like, you know, a whole bunch of Fire Emblem games, but you might get a one-star version, or you can get up to a five-star version, five-star being the best. Uh, so people are uninstalling and reinstalling it so they can get those initial orbs and just re-rolling until they get a whole bunch of five-stars. Yeah. Um, and apparently the whole methodology behind that makes it a gotcha game. Um, and maybe it just has to do with random, as far as I can tell, it has to do with just, just getting random, randomly generated character characters based on a certain scale. Yeah, um, and trying to get the best of them. Uh, so that's kind of the bare basics of it. If you've ever played a Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem game, this is by all intents and purposes a Fire Emblem game, missing a few features uh, to be expected. There, there's no relationships. You're not making babies. Uh, that's just kind of. <laughs> I don't know if people yeah. expected that out of this game, but pre- previous Fire Emblem games have let you like get married and stuff. Uh, so that's not here, although, you know, the characters definitely show you the love sometimes. That they do. But y- you don't, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so I can see your talk, you know, from an experience standpoint, because I played a lot of Fire Emblem Awakening specifically. Um, I played a Fire Emblem game back in the GameCube days uh, that I loved a lot. I, I really apologize, folks, that I forget what it's called. Um, and that's basically my the gist of my experience with Fire Emblem. Basically a couple games, uh, loved them both. Really want to get into Fates. I do own Birthright, but I haven't really had gotten much chance to play it. So, you knowing nothing about Fire Emblem. This is what I'm interested in, because I, I know what to expect going in. You don't know what's going on. I, I have some vague ideas of well, what's going on. Well, because well, what do you think Fire Emblem is? Well, I knew it was like a turn-based... Uh, how do I want to turn strategy? I, well, the turn-based strategy, but where you can also only move a certain number of tiles. Yeah, so it's not like it's a you can run all the way across the map type of thing. Mm-hmm. But uh, and I mean, I, like I said, um, my f- or I haven't said, but uh, my friend Chris is a huge Fire Emblem fan. So I've watched him play. I've you know I've heard heard him talk a lot about it. So I, I've I, I have some understanding of the game. Like, I was expecting, you know, the whole marriage thing to be in there, too, because I had heard of it and whatnot. Um, but 
I, I now hearing that it's not whatever, it's not a big deal to me because I'm new to the game, so whatever. Sure, sure. Um, so far, I've only think I completed the prologue, but it is it is fun. Um, I will give it that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting to me. Uh, you know, as a new player to the series, like not maybe not brand new. Like, oh my god, I've never heard of this series before, but. As someone that maybe didn't have expectations of, say, a veteran Fire Emblem player, and I wouldn't even right. call myself a veteran Fire Emblem player, but um, what, what, what's your feeling coming out of the little bit of time you've spent with it? Uh, like I said, it, it is it is fun. It's definitely interesting. Um, I'm not a whole, whole sure about what's going on with the story in a certain sense, but... I get that there's two factions, and one opens portals, one closes portals. Uh, other than that, I really don't know what's going on, because, again, <laughs> I'm only through the prologue. Sure. But um, So it does open up a lot more after the prologue. Because um, after the prologue, that's when you can enjoy other aspects of the game. Like You still have your main story mode, uh, which I don't even know if there's an end to it, because I personally haven't gotten that far. But there are, it opens up like arena battles. And all these other things that earn you different items. Like, the story mode seems to earn you orbs. Like, one orb per battle one. Yep. Uh, which, again, is really, really important. It's also a really, really slow way to get orbs. Which, again, to get more orbs faster, spend money. That's, right. That's how, these games are, that's how these games are built. Um, Fire Emblem is one of the top... Fire Emblem Heroes, I'm sorry. It's one of the top grossing games on Apple and Android right now. Uh, because of this. Uh, well, that doesn't bother me. Uh, because as I'm playing, I, the game never really forces me to, it, even when I run out of orbs, it's not like, hey, click here and spend 50 bucks and get right. 100 orbs. Yeah, that is, I mean, it is nice in a way that it doesn't force it down your throat, but at the same point in time, I don't know if I know exactly where to go to actually buy orbs if I really want to. Okay, so so this actually brings up an interesting aspect I want to talk about. Because I'm an experienced Fire Emblem player, so even me coming into the game, after you get past the initial like trial demo area when you first boot up the game, it looks extremely complicated with no explanation mm -hmm. for what any yeah, of the will, stuff I, in the menu I is. I will definitely say so that. So like, this is why, That's like true. as an example, I didn't know where to buy them either. I just tapped around until I found it. And I'm it, sure most it made, people it do made, that anyways. But. And the thing is, like, it made sense where it was. But um, and, and I'm not saying like the game needs to hold your hand, uh, like especially for an experienced fighter. I'm a player like me. It didn't bother me. But I think for a lot of like newer players like you or people who um, have never even heard of it and maybe just see oh it's a top app on the App Store right now for free, like a top free app. Let me go right. download it. Yeah. Um, it's one thing that I think will really put them off once they get past the demo. Like oh man, the demo part was fun. But now they're throwing all this complicated stuff at me. Like, what's all these feathers do? What do these dual swords do? None of it is explained to you. Yeah, I will definitely agree with that one. Um, and I'm sure somewhere in there there's like a help menu with tips and explains everything. But I have to go find it. Yeah, that um, shouldn't happen. It should just be explained in a tutorial that has a skip option for those who want to skip it. Um, just just a, a personal thing. So, uh, and, and that might be the only negative I really have to say about the game is it, it just approaches it, it's very abrupt in its in its complexities and that that's not necessarily a problem because fire emblem is a complex game it's always been a complex game many many different facets uh you know there's differences in this game like your heroes can't die um that's an that's an option you can turn on on most games so you, are you are you did have you looked to see if there is an option to actually turn that on? No, the, no it does not, not exist. Okay. It does not exist in the game. So there, like, there are difficulty, like harder difficulty levels that open up once you get out of the prologue. But okay, um, so like right now everyone plays on normal, and then you, there's like harder, harder modes and easier modes, um, which the Fire Emblem has always had. But there's no like the insanity mode, which is like where, all, where if your character dies in a battle, they're it's, dead. They're dead. Yeah, done. You can't I, I knew back. that one. Yep. Um, and that's something that, as a Fire Emblem fan, I miss because it made me, I guess, more careful in my strategies. Because now it's like, oh, if I fail, oh, it just costs me some stamina that comes back if I just right. stop playing the game yeah. for like an hour. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I know that is one complaint I think Chris had that it is kind of in a way almost too easy. The the game itself has he uh, gotten to the harder difficulty levels? I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm sure he has by but, now. Yeah, um, it, it's that that's really the only complaint I have is I, I don't really. I mean, th- there's other ways you can complain about the game. You know, you always only battle with like four characters at a time. Um, and it's always on the same size tile map, like 16 by 9 or whatever it yeah. is. Um, and a lot of that's probably just because of the limitations of the phone, and they don't want to have like make it more complex by having arrows and having to scroll all over the battlefield. Right, yeah. Like, I, I, I no, get it. No, it makes sense. I get it. Um, so in a way, it was going to be simplified. Um, it was going to be a story that's really almost irrelevant. Um, and I don't want to say it is irrelevant, but it's like in a world between worlds um, that summons in things from all the different Fire Emblem games. It really doesn't matter. What happens to this world, per yeah, se? Right. At least to this point, and where I'm in the story, it's like, yeah, someone's dominating this world and controlling heroes, and I'm not supposed to care about that. But you know, if you go back and play Awakening or you play any of the Fates games, it's like, yeah, it doesn't really. The, there's no reference to this stuff happening, so it's kind of like it's just kind of happening in its own universe, and I'm okay with that. Um, the gameplay is fantastic. It's. It does start out easy, but I think Fire Emblem games always, in my opinion, start out kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I know some Fire Emblem games let you select the hard, like the hardest difficulty right away, so like you can make it super, super difficult if you want. Uh, but I've always started out with normal, just to kind of get my grips, what's going on, and then if I want to bump it up, I bump it up. Great. So maybe my experience is a little different. It's just a complex game. It's a, it's a complex game uh, that I think is actually working really well on mobile. It is. I... I, I it, I think it runs fairly, really smooth, actually. So, oh, one of the smoothest. Yeah. So there is that, and I, I mean, is this actually Nintendo or? Yeah. Okay. So it is actually N- a Nintendo. Nintendo game. Okay. I, I wasn't one hundred percent sure. I yeah, thought just it like was. Super but, Mario Run. Okay. Yeah. So again, we we still got to realize though that this is still fairly new for Nintendo. So yeah, this would be their third mobile app, their second game that they personally have been responsible right. for. Right, and. Being that as it is, this is, for that, a phenomenal app. Sure. Um, I think it's a phenomenal app overall because, I mean, user reviews have it at four and a half stars, which already means everyone, like mo- a majority of people playing it love it. Part of the reason that they love it is, one, it works. Oh, yeah. Um, that's a lot, a, lot, a lot of games with server issues and all this stuff. You know, we, we had problems with Pokemon Duel. Uh, none of that exists here. Everything just works. It is a little abrupt when it when you first get it. It's like, oh hey, download this three hundred megabyte pack. Yeah, it's like, okay, wow. like that was a little abrupt. No, no, no real warning. Like there was a warning, hey, you need to update. Yeah, but it's like it doesn't update like other apps where like you know you just open up and it just automatically it, updates. It'll open up and yeah. automatically updates or like and in, in, I know this is the case on iOS devices. If you go into your app store, there'll just be a whole list of things that need to be updated. You just hit update and it just updates them. All. Yeah, uh, um, I think that's the same way on Android too. But yeah, yeah, but but this game is just like you're just playing and all of a sudden it'll just stop you and be like, hey, you need to download this update. You can't. Play. Yeah, it's like okay. I mean, I'm not mad about the initial. I know some people are like, oh, 300 megabytes. I'm like. Yeah, but how many of us can't connect to Wi-Fi if we really want to update the thing? Right. Um, so, especially since, like, if you own a smart device, just stop at McDonald's. Right. Order a Some, water. Yeah. Small water. Of course, they'll tell you you need to buy something, but just just, just go wink, wink, nudge. Uh, someone will hand you a cup. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience of when I used to work at McDonald's. Or just go into the bathroom and take a crap. Yeah, right, and just connect to the Wi-Fi quick. Yeah. Download it. Uh, so, overall, I... I you know, I don't want to get too in-depth on, on the game itself because it's free. You guys can go out and play it right now. Um, I was actually I actually technically wrote up a review for it, and then I decided, you know what, it's not really worth publishing because reviews are nice, um, but I, I feel like they are a way of, of presenting an opinion to help people decide if it's worth Purchasing something, in. yeah. Um, and whether or not this game is worth spending any money on is going to be up to the individual just like it was with pokemon go it's a game you can play entirely for free uh you get as much out of it as you can if you pay for it if you pay for it you get more characters faster um you know you can compete complete more stuff maybe faster and level up people faster but you know it, it's not really a pay to win per se even though there are arena battles because it kind of pits you against people using the same level characters so it is a lot of strategy it it feels like a complete experience which it it feels weird saying, but 
that's kind of a rarity on smart devices. Oh, definitely. Um, even Super Mario Run, which I think is fantastic, it has an end. You spend 10 bucks on it, and it just ends, the, the single-player mode. Now, there is a multiplayer component that's not direct multiplayer, but it's like kind of like trying to beat ghost times of, of right. other players. Right, okay, yeah. Um, well, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and like it's fun, it's repeatable, uh, but I... I don't play Super Mario Run anymore. I yeah, beat it. Eventually, it, it, yeah. it loses its glory and, and, and like it, it's away. still fantastic. It's utterly fantastic. I, I feel like it was worth my ten bucks, but that is something I feel like is reviewable because to get the whole experience, you need to know was that ten dollars worth the price of admission. Personally, I think it was. But as I was about to publish this review, I'm like, you know, this is better just to have as a discussion rather than throwing it out there as. You should invest heavily in this game. Spend your time in it. The end rewards are going to be worth it. This, unlike Super Mario Run, doesn't seem to have an end. Uh, right. They have future DLC planned for it. Whether you know, wow. it's probably going to be free. I'm, I'm assuming, but you know, you know, again, you have to spend money, get more orbs, yada yada. yada. So it, it's kind of one of those games because it's a gotcha game that it's just going to keep going. It's going to keep going. It's going to keep having a life of its own. Um, I'm just glad that when you do play it, it works. It's utterly fantastic. It feels like a Fire Emblem game. The the money stuff isn't pushed upon you, uh, but if you're an addict, you're probably going to lose any money. <laughs> it's just how it goes. Or you're going to end up deleting it 50 times until it's, you hit on five five stars right it's away. It's not like us in baseball at all. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's... I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised because it's a very different approach than with Super Mario Run. And just like with Super Mario Run, they kind of nailed it. Yeah. Um, and it had, it, and it did something Super Mario Run didn't do, have a simultaneous release on Android and iOS. Right. Um, Where is that? So hopefully that's a continuous thing. Even as I'm an Apple user and haven't had to worry about not getting stuff early or getting it on time, um, it still does suck that you can't play Super Mario Run until sometime in March. Or I take your phone. Or I take my phone. I know, but on your still, own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Fire Emblem Heroes, great. Um, I guess if I had to sum it up, it's the perfect type of Fire Emblem game for a phone. I, I would actually agree with that statement. Like, the so. features cut out from it don't feel like it detracts from it being, like, a true Fire Emblem game. Because it just feels like those features would detract from what this game is trying to do, personally. Um, especially since it's, it's all the summoning thing. Like, you're going to get married to a hero you're summoning and then going to send back at some point. <laughs> it, Bye! Oh, we got married. Bye, go back to your world. <laughs> oh, I'm pregnant! Oh, um, tough beans. Uh, yeah, that's really it. The, the only thing I'll say is confusing so far to me, and, and again, this has to do with the fact there's no explanations um, given to you. You have to dig it up. Is you friend people, right? Yeah. And when you friend people, you get like bonus feathers or something. Uh, but and you get to greet them, and you, and you get some bonuses from that. But after all that's all done, I don't really know what the point of the friends are. I, I haven't really been able to message them. Um, after you arena battle them, you can friend them. I don't really. Uh, I don't really get. It's almost like, is it just a competition to get the most friends or something? I. <laughs> That's a different possibility. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure you guys are out there just yelling at me like, "Oh my god, you really don't understand how this game works." I'm like, "That's kind of the point we're my, making." That's, a, that's kind of my criti- well, only criticism is it doesn't explain it. Right. But um, if you spend the time to invest into it, everything works. And I'm sure the friends thing like it has an absolute like understandable way that everything works. You don't even know how to buy things in the game. In the game one doesn't tell you to buy things. Uh, which I like, and two, um, I guess it encourages you to explore the UI on its own. And unlike Pokemon Duel, when you tap the icon, <laughs> they work. And it doesn't actually shut off on and me. And it doesn't try to, like, loading. Yeah. Loading on every little thing you're doing. It seems like a lot of it works locally on your phone, and it only connects to the server when, when it has to. to. Yep. Um, which is the way it should be. Exactly. 